Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all for joining us during the Lithium Partner Fall 2022 Investor Conference. My name is Robert Brisa, Vice President of Lithium Partners. During this presentation, we welcome Dale Schwed, CEO of Crew Energy, ticker symbol CR on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Today, I've asked the company to briefly run through the slide presentation, and then we'll engage in a fireside chat, like a Q&A session. Before we begin, for those not familiar with Lithium Partners, it's one of the country's leading investor relations firms with more than two decades of corporate access experience. We've built one of the industry's most diverse and effective platforms for connecting small cap companies with high quality and focused institutional investors while creating a framework for best practices for all investor relations. Before we begin, one final item, I wanna remind everyone that the company is available for one-on-one -on -one meetings later this week. If you have not already signed up, please send me an email at breza, B-R-E-Z-A, at lithampartners.com or visit www.lithampartners.com forward slash virtual and click on the one-on-one -on -one meeting request button. With that said, let me turn the presentation over to Dale Schwed, CEO of Crew Energy. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Thank you, Robert. Um, so up on the screen is a presentation I'm going to go through with you today. Uh, the first slide, obviously, you know, the industry back in 2020 has come a long way from where it was uh, during the pandemic, and we thought this slide was uh, appropriate in terms of where we've uh, been and, and, and where we're going. So uh, the other thing that's important here is something new that we just added. We, we now are um, certified uh, from equitable origin, which uh, gives us best practices in ESG as, as a measurement uh, of our performance. So very happy with uh, with that certification that we just uh, we just announced this week. Let's take a look. Uh, so take a look, why would you want to invest in crew? Well, I think the, the biggest thing is we came up with a two-year plan back in 2020 in the, in the middle of the pandemic and saw that uh, oil and gas prices, particularly gas, were much higher than what we had previous experienced. As a matter of fact, the, the, the prior six years, gas averaged about $2.03 in MCF, and, and we saw an opportunity to hedge at over $3 in MCF. Uh, for our gas. So we did that um, to underpin a pretty aggressive capital program that, that was really designed uh, to increase our production and, and reduce our unit costs, they're, they're, therefore increasing our margins. And that is something that we have achieved. And clearly, we've had some tailwinds uh, with better commodity prices than what we had previously forecasted. So that, that's been very positive. In addition to that, uh, what we wanted to do in, in this two-year period, which now we're in sort of the last uh, three months of that, of that uh, program, is to reduce our debt. And uh, so, so we did ramp up our spending in 2020 and 2021 to exit uh, 2021 with about $405 million of debt. And I'm happy to tell you that uh, we've now reduced that by $250 million this year to roughly $150 million of, of, uh, of total debt at this point in time. So on, the, on this slide, uh, clearly one of the, the programs that we have was increased production. We were able to do that on a per share basis, uh, both in 20 to 21 and now 21 to 22 by 25%. Funds flows up dramatically, uh, up 134% from uh, from 21 into 22. And clearly, and this, this is related to uh, high uh, AFF or free AFF, which is free cash flow of $160, $190 million this year. Uh, what we did in the first quarter and put production on in the second quarter, taking advantage of the high oil prices, increased our, our condensate production by 84% in Q2, 22 over 21, which really allowed us to outperform um, in, in, with respect to cash flow in, in that second quarter. I'll get into that in a little more detail. In terms of our, our reserve value, uh, at the end of last year, it was 11.65 a share. Uh, I think we believe it should be much higher than that this year because of the fact that we've reduced the debt in addition to the fact that I was using a very low price deck. So we're eager to get that reserve report done uh, by at year end. Uh, in terms of transporting and, and processing capacity, we have about 40,000 BUEs of capacity, around, roughly 240 million cubic feet a day equivalent. Uh, we, we did stress test uh, that, that system into that 35 to 37,000 BUE mark in Q2, and we didn't have any problems producing uh, those volumes into our infrastructure. Uh, one of the things we have done, we, we sold off about 72 sections of land um, in August for $130 million in an area that we were not going to develop. So now we have 340 net sections of land or 217,000 net acres of land in the Montney. Uh, ample runway to, to keep going here for uh, decades. 
Uh, in terms of our liquidity profile, we're totally undrawn on a $185 million line of credit. Um, and we do have some cash in the bank at the moment. Also during the pandemic, we took the opportunity um, as, as uh, management and board and board members to, to buy the stock. And uh, as a result of that, uh, six of the top 10 shareholders are insiders or 60% of the top 10 are insiders. We have a large uh, tax uh, pool base with over $1.2 billion in tax pools. Uh, that would take us out three to four years uh, at existing uh, prices and, and, and production. And there's a quick sh shot of our capital structure uh, there on the bottom right. In terms of the growth plan that we've been able to achieve, I'm going to go through these slides fairly quickly because there's a there's a, a, a summary at the end of, of these. Um, nevertheless, uh, we did have 22,000 barrels a day production in, in 2020, went up to 26,400 in 2021, and now we're in Q2 this last year. We're 35,000 for the year. We expect to average 32 to 33,000 BUEs, which is a 45% increase from, from 20, uh, 2020. In terms of margins, uh, this is something we're very happy about. Uh, clearly, it, you know, at 1319 of BOE, that was that was not bad actually in 2020. When you consider that this includes operating costs, transportation, GNA, and interest, and in 2021 we reduced that to twelve dollars and two cents. And then in the second quarter of this year, we hit our targets uh, of nine and a quarter to ten and a quarter. Our, our, our average this year, we're, we're uh, forecasting at 975, but in Q2 we we're 963. Uh, a BOE. And if you do the simple math on what kind of production we're currently producing, that added about $40 million of cash flow this year by reducing that cost structure. This is the cash flow growth or AFF growth um, from $41 million in 2020 uh, up to 310 as, as a midpoint uh, this year. Uh, that's over 600% increase from 2020 to 2022. We all know 2020 was a very a uh, poor year, a bad year in, in this industry as it relates to commodity prices. Uh, obviously, we've had increasing pricing from that point in time that would give us the increased cash flow. <clears throat> also of importance here, you can see the 160 to $190 million of free cash flow that will generate in 2022. The balance sheet has, has really improved dramatically from five and a half times uh, L last 12 months uh, 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 debt to EBITDA. And uh, you can see here now we're su suggesting based off our current debt and our, our cash flow is, is going to be uh, obviously including interest costs would be in that 0.3 to 0.5 times midpoint about 0.5, 0.4. Uh, also on a flowing barrel metric, uh, usually in this business that if you're $10,000 per flowing barrel, that's probably not a bad place to be. We're, we're going to be closer to $3,900 uh, per flowing barrel at the end of, end of this year, which we're, we're very happy with. Uh, here's a summary, and again, uh, a lot of numbers here, but I'll just draw your attention to, to the important ones, which is the production per share is up 21% uh, this year and 20 last year. Costs are down 9% last year, 19% this year, uh, and the debt is down 53% last year, and now it's another 69% this year. So, so very, uh, very good uh, metrics when, when you look at uh, those numbers, in addition to the cash flow per share being up 143% this year and 203% last year. <clears throat> this is our Q2 highlights. Last quarter we announced. Um, again, this is our, the best quarter we've ever had in our history. Uh, you, you can see here the average production was 35,000 BOE, up 31% from last year. Uh, operating costs were down 27% to 352. And more, most importantly, our cash flow was $115 million, of which $808 million was free cash flow. So we only spent $7.1 million last, last quarter. So that was a that was a big quarter for us. And you can see on the bottom left how material an impact that had. And that also allowed us to put that on our debt to get our debt down to that 200, uh, by $250 million in the first uh, nine months of the year. Uh, operating costs, very happy about those. Even in an inflationary environment, we've seen our cost structure be fairly flat from an operating cost perspective. Um, and you can also see here that there's a big dramatic increase from Q321 down to 349 and Q421. And that was I uh, had to do with the sale of our heavy oil assets in Alberta and Saskatchewan. So look at the resource. Um, this is pictorial uh, of our resource. Uh, really what's important here, we've drilled 220 wells in the Montney. Uh, you can see the number of zones that we can drill. You can also see the number of zones that we haven't drilled to date, uh, which leaves us a lot of upside going forward. The numbers beside those sticks uh, are the number of wells we drilled in each formation in each of those areas. 
Uh, also, what's important here is we still have over 2,500 drilling locations in our inventory. And, you know, we had a big year last year in terms of drilling over 20 wells. So you can do the math that we drill 20 wells a year in, in an active year, uh, what our, what our uh, uh, envelope is for, uh, for future drilling. It's, uh, it's, it's quite massive. This is uh, a slide illustrating a number of things that are, we believe are important. First of all, um, you, you probably couldn't put a, a land base in a better position with respect to access uh, to takeaway capacity. And so we, we have takeaway capacity on the Alliance pipeline, which is a bullet uh, pipeline that goes to Chicago, the Ambridge pipeline, uh, which we're connected into as well, which goes to the lower mainland uh, uh, in, in British Columbia, as well as the Pacific Northwest. And then the Trans-Canada system goes through our land as well. And that connects uh, to, to a number of points all across North America. So uh, from a gas perspective, we're, we're well positioned. Uh, from, an, from a coastal gas link uh, pipeline that's being constructed, we're extremely well positioned there with our meter station literally right across the street um, from the TC meter station uh, in, at, um, at, in the Ground Brush area. Sorry, it's not our meter station, it's, it's our pipeline that's right across the street. In addition, uh, the land that we sold in August of this year is, uh, is indicated by that brown box on the left. So that was a land on the other side of the Peace River. You can see that river that sort of separates um, that area from our main core at Septimus Scrambridge. Uh, we do have some optionality here also to, to potentially divest of that land further north uh, of our main block there in an area called Flat Rock and Stodder. Um, so, you know, we're working on, on potentially selling that at some point in time to raise additional funds. In addition, uh, we have a rail line that goes right through our land and we do own 11 sections of surface rights that go is on that rail line that we could potentially put a facility on at some point in time uh, to ship uh, liquids to the West Coast. Take a look at the operations of the company. Uh, this is a slide uh, showing the land that we have uh, specifically in the greater Septimus area. Uh, the green dotted line uh, that you see there demarcates uh, a 200 barrels per million of condensate. Uh, line and so everything up in, in the sort of green area uh, is very liquids rich uh, gas and then everything to the southwest uh, of it where, uh, is, is less liquids rich gas meaning under 200 barrels per million of condensate and it gets very dry as you go con uh, as you go to the south uh, southwest here. Uh, we, we have drilled some wells more recently and they're indicated on that, that log on the right. Uh, so, so we've drilled uh, 10 B zone wells at the 414 pad. Yeah, and we drilled a CSOM well there as, as well. And you can see that the productivity of these wells is, are very robust. The three west wells in the 414 pad averaged uh, 8.35 million cubic feet a day over the first 150 days and 523 barrels of condensate. On the east wells, uh, much more condensate there at 868 barrels a day, but less gas at 1.3 uh, million cubic feet a day of gas. That's an, uh, over six the first 60 days. And then the C zone well, which we're very happy with, we haven't really drilled many wells in that zone. And that zone produced uh, 607 barrels a day as an average <clears throat> over the first 60 days and 1.9 million cubic feet of gas. So right now we're drilling the 11 to 27 pad uh, up to the north of that pad. So we would expect similar results from a, from a liquids perspective uh, as the wells drill to the east on that 414 pad. Um, and we're, we're on the fifth well on that pad right now. This is, this is a, indicating the, the liquids uh, production and the gas production from these wells. Uh, and, and what's more important here is, the, is the, the black dotted line, which is indicates our, the type curve that we have booked in the area. Uh, so you can see here, we're, we're far outpacing what, uh, what we thought we're, we're gonna get in the area. And that's really a function of a few things, drilling probably longer wells and, um, and having good reservoir. Those are the two things that I think uh, are, are responsible for that. In addition to the well on the right, the 421 pad, and the big difference here is the wells on, on, the, on the left were drilled to 4,140 meter average uh, lateral lengths, and the wells on the right were drilled uh, 2,710 meter lateral lengths. We're very excited uh, in the second quarter, we also tested an exploration well that as you can see there is the A14 and 34 well uh, at 330 barrels per million of, of condensate. We had a 10 day test on that well, uh, averaging 1.2 million cubic feet of gas and 400, 400 barrels per day of condensate. And really what it does, you can see that darker yellow line uh, opens up that entire area 
uh, for future drilling. And you, we have no reserves booked uh, by that A4 or 30, 14 to 34 well. And it is important, you see where we uh, have uh, put on the Manias Fault. I think at one point in time, uh, the thought was that uh, the land on that side of the fault would be less perspective. It is not. It is uh, is very perspective, similar that it is at, as it is at uh, West Septimus uh, and Septimus. And this is the Granbridge development. This is an area that we we drilled three wells last year. Uh, again, on the right, you can see they're, they're uh, highly prolific uh, gas wells, anywhere from 10 to 12 million a day IPs. Uh, initial production rates, and then you can see our IP, which is the first the average uh, production of the first 180 days, is 8.6 million cubic feet a day, far outpacing uh, the type curve that we have booked in that area. So very happy with those results. We've just drilled another five wells uh, to the east from that same pad, and those wells will be coming on uh, next week, uh, actually. So excited about getting, having those wells uh, contribute to our production base. And also of importance on the, on the lower part of that screen, uh, we drilled in the AA unit that you can see there. Uh, we've drilled now four wells in that unit. Uh, we've drilled two wells in the A unit, uh, and then two wells in the B, one in the upper B and one in the lower B. And so what we're trying to do uh, is, is find out or, or, or determine uh, what the best spacing would be from a lateral perspective per zone and also from a vertical perspective between zones. Uh, and as such, we, we run fiber optics uh, in, in those well bores as well as tracers in, in the completion to determine um, the best way to uh, go ahead and, and deplete this reservoir the most efficiently uh, going forward. Very excited about this as, there, as what it allows us to do is build another gas plant in this area. We do have plans uh, to put in anywhere from 120 million cubic feet a day, feet of day, feet a day uh, to 180 million cubic feet per day uh, gas plant. And that would uh, take place in around uh, two to three years. Uh, that would essentially allow us to double our production from where we currently are uh, in that sort of 32 to 33,000 BUE range with capacity that we have uh, existing of 40,000 BUEs. This is a case study at Septimus. Uh, what it really shows you in the blue line on the left uh, is how low gas prices were for a long period of time. I told you it's $2.03 for six years. Uh, when gas prices uh, are, are more favorable in that sort of $4 to $5 range, as you can see in, the, on, in 2014, uh, we cash flowed around $80 million. We spent around 95. So uh, we, we definitely cut our spending in this area because gas prices were low. We took that capital that we made out of the area in cash flow and applied it to the West Septimus area where there are more liquids. And you can see now in Q1 22, we spent around $28 million, cash flowed around 30. And then in Q2, we only spend a couple of million dollars in cash flow at around $70 million. So, you know, and then obviously responsible for that is increased production on the right up to that 44,500. Uh, uh, that's a million cubic feet a day uh, or MCF per day. And then uh, that, that uh, gave us a 70, roughly $70 million of cash flow. So increased production uh, in the, in the face of higher pricing. And that's kind of what this business is all about. And we did that there. From a hedging and marketing uh, perspective, um, one of the things that you know we're conscious of here in Alberta is maintenance on the uh, Trans Canada system as well as uh, on the Enbridge system. And you can see, as a result, we, we did hedge quite a bit of our production in the green bar uh, in Q3 of 2022, and that falls off in the Q4 as that maintenance comes off, and we would expect some higher spot pricing as we go into winter. So that's one of the things that we're we're cognizant of and and, and try to mitigate the risks of that. We also uh, sell gas uh, a month in advance uh, when we, we know some of these uh, maintenance uh, schedules are, are in place. And that allows us to mitigate the lower pricing that, that uh, some have seen in, in August, uh, particularly on, on the uh, ecosystem. Uh, on the condensate base, uh, we, we don't generally hedge more than six months in advance. And you can see there just over 100. But right now, it's not there, but we, you're over $100 a barrel for, for the first uh, six months of this year. And uh, and in over uh, in the Q, Q1, Q2 of 23, we're still over $100 a, a BUE. So uh, one of the things that's important here is we do target 40 to 50% of our production to be hedged in the, in the forward year. So we're about 26% hedged right now going into 2023. Uh, we would fill in that, that other uh, 14 to 24% to here in the next few weeks and, and months uh, to, to get to that level. In addition, our gas is hot gas. Uh, it has a lot of liquids in it. So whatever posted price you see, uh, we generally get about a 22% premium to, to that price 
uh, which also obviously helps your cash flow. So the value creation uh, can, uh, in terms of our reserve growth, uh, fairly consistent PDP reserve growth, you can see here we're 82 million barrels of PDP reserves, which really underpins our asset value here. We're about a, a billion dollar uh, uh, enterprise value. So you can see that that's roughly you know, $12 a BOE on a, on a PDP basis, uh, which would indicate that's that's well covered from a, from that from the NEV perspective. In addition to that, what we have seen on the right uh, is lower costs going forward. The 2P F&D costs uh, are in the blue and the 1P or total approved F&D costs um, there are in the, in the sorry, in the, it's the opposite. The blue is the 1P and the 2P is the yellow. Um, again, these costs are coming down with time. And, and as a result, uh, you know, the, what we've seen is a recycle ratios in that sort of four times, meaning you invest a dollar uh, and you make four, which is obviously very profitable. Uh, some of the things that we've done to, to, to help us in, the, in this case, uh, again, it's more technology, technology that we're applying and drilling longer wells uh, as well as fracking the wells uh, more intensely, which has created uh, this, this scenario. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of upside on, on drilling um, and proving up more uh, reserves, so just a reminder that 82 million barrels of PDP reserves we have, we have uh, roughly 200 million barrels uh, of uh, 1P reserves. This is all at the end of last year. Uh, and 400 million BOEs of 2P reserves at the end of last year. And that was, it's roughly relates to a, 20 year reserve life index for 1P reserves and a 40 year reserve life index for 2P reserves. Um, you can see on the, on the yellow, blank yellow land is that we have uh, no reserves booked in all of that land. And we do have reserves booked where you see the lines. Of importance is in many of those areas, there's only one zone generally or possibly two zones that we have reserves booked when in some cases we have to, uh, have up to four zones uh, to develop. So there's still a lot of a big runway here to continue to add um, more uh, locations as well as, as reserves going forward. So as I pointed out, uh, we, we did more recently uh, on the bottom left, uh, August of 2022, sold some land in the Portage area, Atachi, for, for $130 million. We still have an option uh, to raise another uh, $37.5 million by selling 11.43% uh, uh, of our existing 180 million dollar or 180 million cubic feet of capacity uh, in the Septums West Septums area. Uh, in addition, we have uh, we just recently, as of uh, Monday, 19th, paid off 128 million dollars uh, of senior notes that were due in 2024. And uh, in those notes, we have, there are no financial covenants, and we still have that 185 million dollar uh, line of credit, which is 100 percent undrawn. So, in very good. Uh, financial position with strong liquidity. So ESG, um, very happy about where we are here and where we're going. Uh, obviously, we, we have uh, now been certified by Equitable Origin, which, which is uh, you know, a fantastic accomplishment for our company. Uh, you can see back in 2020 that we were uh, number seven on that list from, from the top in terms of uh, GHG emissions. Uh, you can see where we are now at fourth from the bottom. And a couple things, uh, you know, that are responsible for this is waste heat recovery out at our West Septimus gas plant, in addition to uh, divesting of our heavy oil assets that were located in Saskatchewan and, and Alberta. <clears throat> and this is a, a summary of the first slide that uh, we, we talked about, about, you know, the important things about crew and, and, um, and why we think it's a, it's a good buy, uh, even in the face that our share price has, has appreciated, but we're still trading uh, under three times debt adjusted cash flow, which I think uh, is, is relatively cheap from historical uh, multiple multiples that we've seen at you know six, six over six times. So um, I, um, all these points I, I talked about previously, so I, I won't repeat myself. So with that, I, I can take some questions. <clears throat> That's great, Dale. Thank you very much for the overview. Um, first of all, I want to say congratulations on a, on a great Q2 um, and, and a fantastic, I'm going to say, disciplined job of really, you know, adhering to the principles you laid out back in 2020. Um, so fantastic and congratulations. Thank I guess, you. you know, with, with that as the backdrop, I think obviously as investors are looking at the market, the biggest question is, you know, is a Q2, is that the peak, right? And yeah. you talked about a lot of efforts that you're undertaking with increased drilling, et cetera, et cetera. Why, why would you tell people to, 
you know, this is still a lot of runway left here, as you just described with the land effort, um, you know, kind of optimizing your land effort, I guess, and increasing the number of drills. It would seem that you're well on a sustainable path for exponential growth here continuing. Yeah, I mean, so so one of the things that's important, obviously, is a strong balance sheet. And I think we saw the, the benefits of that uh, numerous times uh, in the history of this business. But so we, we are in that position now and, and we want to continue to strengthen it. So that's number one. So a strong balance sheet will allow us to, to be a little more flex, flexible with our capital program. And what we've seen over the last uh, little while, especially with some of the uh, metrics that we're putting production on at, uh, which has been over the last year or so under $10,000 per flowing barrel. We, we budget, try to budget around 15,000 because we, we do uh, drill wells in that ultra condensate rich area, which tend to have lower um, BOE of production uh, than what we would at ground rich, we would the higher BOE production. So there's a bit of a balance there. Obviously condensate, you're going to get a lot more for that, that product and the, the economics are actually better uh, there than they are in the drier gas. Uh, so we, what we're trying to do is position ourselves to be able to continue to grow the company. And, and you really, you know, I, I referred earlier that we're trading at uh, under three times debt adjusted cash flow. Uh, so if we were to assume that we continue to do that over, you know, the next sort of two to three years, what our plan is, is to grow our production. So what we want to do, as I indicated in the ground bridge area, um, is to put in a, another gas plant in that 120 to 180 million cubic feet range per day. And that would, would allow us to double our production so if we double our production, we should be able to double our cash flow. Uh, and if we double our cash flow, we still save the three times uh, debt adjusted cash flow that would get us to double our share price. So that's really you know, how we look at adding value to our shareholder base. Um, you know, we, we're not depending on or relying on potential increases in, 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 uh, mul in multiples going forward. Uh, and so the only way we can, we can really you know, uh, take that, that multiple is, is uh, in, terms of, of, or in terms of our share price, is to double our production and, and therefore have an opportunity to, to double that uh, uh, that share price as well. Dale, yeah, one one thing you touched on a little bit in the presentation was logistics um, and having the ability to you know connect to a railway right across the, the highway or however it's separated. Um, you know, can you talk about the challenges that you you've seen and, and where you're able to take advantage of logistics to I mean, it's it's hard to see how logistics in the short term at least change a whole lot, and there's obviously a, a stress on that environment today. Yeah, I mean, there's a few things. I mean, look, when you talk about logistics, it might, it might mean pricing because there's there's some inflationary pricing, obviously, in in our business. But uh, you know, the things that we try to do is control our own destiny. So, um, you know, the gas plants that w that we own, we don't own 100 percent of them, but we operate them and we control them. So. So as such, we control the volumes coming into those, those gas plants. We also have firm transportation um, that we sign on to, to the various pipelines that I, I referred to earlier with Alliance, Enbridge, and TransCanada. And then, you know, we are very close to the coastal gas link pipeline, which is going to take gas to the, to the West Coast uh, for the, the uh, LNG Canada, pro Canada project, which is expected to start in 2025. So I think from that perspective, I think we're very, very well positioned. Some of the things that we're doing um, on the cost side of the equation, obviously, you know, things that, that make a big difference for us is drilling longer, longer wells. Um, a few years ago, we would be drilling one mile lateral wells. Now we're drilling, uh, you know, two to three miles. And I, I think, you know, for one thing, that's really helping uh, reduce the, the cost uh, of finding uh, and developing uh, the hydrocarbons. Uh, but the other thing is that, you know, through the advancement of technologies such as Rotary, rotary steerable systems, uh, mud systems that we're using, invert mud systems that we're using to be able to, to drill longer wells and keep the hole clean, uh, using bigger pumps on rigs, 7,500 PSI pumps on, on the rigs that we're using allows us to keep that hole clean as well as we continue to drill further and further out. And then, and, and then from a, a fracking perspective, uh, you know, we're using friction reducer in our, in our uh, frack operations, which allows us to, to uh, frack the wells at the toes uh, of the wells uh, a lot more efficiently than what was once uh, able uh, to be achieved. So all those things in combination have, have really Im uh, allowed us to improve uh, how we do our business uh, and, and reduce our costs. The other thing that we're doing is, is that uh, from an efficiency perspective, um, logistics as well, uh, considering that, is we're drilling bigger pads. We're, you know, at one point in time, we might drill a three-wall pad. Now we're drilling 
uh, anywhere from six to 10 wells on a pad. And the, the more wells, um, you know, you can, you can put on a pad, obviously your efficiencies are going are to be better. So all those things are coming into play in this environment. That's great. Um, when, when you talked about the, 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 the look, the liquid opportunity, I believe is how you kind of said it, the profile. Yeah. And is there more, um, trying to put this in a way for investors, are you allocating more resources to that option given the parameters there, or can you kind of help us maybe understand how that optionality is playing into your investment uh, profile capital, whether that be more capital towards that angle, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, that's where we put most of our capital more recently. I mean, we the with the um, how how prolific those wells are at Groundbridge, we don't have to drill that many wells to keep that area, that pipeline, uh, relatively full. So, so that's good. On, on the other side, um, at on the liquids rich area, at, we call it uh, you know the Greater Septimus area. Uh, as I pointed out, we just put that four fourteen pad on there. Uh, we're drilling a pad about a mile north of that pad right now called 11 to 27. Uh, that's a six wall pad, which we're on the on the fifth wall right now. So we are definitely focused more on, I would say, the liquids rich portion or the condensate rich portion of our of our asset base. Uh, and we have uh, a lot of running room in that area uh, to continue drilling east uh, of where we're currently drilling. In addition, uh, um, uh, to, for us, it's really important is, is the fact that we, we did drill that C zone unit that um, came in, ex, you know, with high production rates um, in that 414 pad, which would allow us to continue go back on those pads and drill additional wells into that unit. Uh, it is hydrodynamically separate from that B unit. So whatever we did there would be obviously uh, additional in terms of reserves and production. So very happy about uh, the developments there. That's great. Um, just maybe one last look at the, the cost of the equation or the margin profile of, of the company. Um, when, when you, you kind of looked at it and broke out in your presentation, some of the costs um, yeah. as it relates to the general delivery, um, how, how are you looking at the cost side of the equation going forward? Do you see yourself getting better margins due to higher production or do you see some cost scaling um, opportunities to improve margins. How, how should investors look at margin, the margin profile going forward? Yeah, I mean that's a good question. I mean, we, we obviously have reduced our, our costs, I think, by twenty seven percent since we initiated this program, uh, and we believe we can continue to reduce them somewhat, uh, only because of the fact that we're still using even through that period we're thirty five thousand BUEs. So we have fixed costs going through our facilities, um, and we, we we're capable of around forty thousand BUEs. Uh, and we also have obviously transportation costs that are fixed as well. So uh, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's more about trying to optimize our production going through our existing production or our existing uh, facilities in terms of processing, as well as transportation. So we believe we can reduce them uh, somewhat going forward. Having said that, there has been some inflation clearly on, on fuel and things like that in the industry. Uh, from an operating cost perspective, that, that does affect things. Uh, from a capital cost perspective, uh, you know what we've seen is definitely an increase in steel costs. So, you know you're you're up, I would say, seventy percent uh, on steel costs from where we were a few years ago. Um, you know the 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 transportation part of the business, like getting frac sand to well sites and things like that, that that's you know gone up as well. Just again, more related to where energy is. We've got a natural hedge clearly with with producing it. Uh, so sure. that that, that kind of helps uh, helps a lot. But you know the things that we have been really really trying to work on is the, you know one of the things in Canada is that is that uh, if you operate in the winter, uh, usually your costs are higher. Like uh, you know drilling costs are going to be higher. You're there. You know there's you've got less light. You you may have seven eight hours of light a day. Uh, so, so so and it's cold, right? So things break and, and move people move more slowly and all the rest of that stuff. So we, we've been trying to focus a lot of our uh, capex. Uh, in in quarters that, that you know it was not the first quarter is the bottom line. So um, we you know we've tried to do a lot in, in sort of Q3 Q4 of each year. And the benefit of doing that is you're you're kind of ramping up your production uh, into what generally is a higher higher pricing environment uh, when it comes down to winter because clearly uh, no one knows what the winter is going to be like. But if you know if you have a cold winter, usually gas prices go up. So uh, we try to take advantage of that. So that's some of the things that we, that we try to do just even from an operational perspective is more from a marketing as well as operating uh, perspective. And, I, and again, I did tell you earlier that 
the things that we are trying to do as well is optimize what we're doing in each well by drilling them longer and fracking them more intensely. So we're getting uh, more productivity on a, on a per well basis. And it really was uh, was uh, well illustrated uh, when, when I showed you the, the, the type curves that we're achieving versus yeah. what was booked. No, that's great. Well, Dale, thank you very much for your time okay. today for the great overview. We greatly appreciate it. Um, to anyone out there that has not already signed up for a one-on-one, -on -one, again, please send me an email at breza, B-R-E-Z-A, at lithumpartners.com, or vi again, visit www.lithumpartners.com forward slash virtual and click on the one-on-one -on -one media request button. With that, I hope you all have a great conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. Thank you.